Oh my goodness. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. And the birds get deployed. And he's gonna draw four. Man, this wow, is value. What a, what you guys a like value, I mean I mean that's the greatest. Hello internet, my name is Patrick and this is Fringeworthy, the show where I talk to you about weird magic decks. Today we're going to be talking about a deck called Bird Brain. Now a lot of you are familiar with the modern version of Bird Brain. I saw it, thought, hmm, this deck would be better with four Force of Wills, four Brainstorms, and four Ponders. So I made it. Here it is. So here's the list that I've chosen to run for Legacy Bird Brain. There's a couple things still in flux that you might see as different from the modern version of Bird Brain. The modern version of Bird Brain nowadays is splashing black for Yehenny's expertise, and I find Srom's expertise is actually much better in the grindier matchups. But more on that a little later. Now, first let's talk a little bit about how Brain in the Jar works with Beck and Call. So if you look closely at Brain in the Jar, it says you may cast an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Brain in the Jar from your hand without paying its mana cost. So, when you activate Brain in the Jar and it gets a second counter, you can look for a card in your hand that has converted mana cost 2. For example, Beck and Call. Now, since half of Beck and Call is Beck, which costs 2, this satisfies the requirements of Brain in a Jar, and so you can move to cast it. Now, when you move to cast it for free from Brain in a Jar, you are casting it from your hand, which means Fuse allows you to cast one half or both halves of the card. So, you choose to cast the whole card, and you just get birds, 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 and card draw, card draw, card draw. It's pure value. It's just an amazing synergy that the deck likes to run. It helps put together the backbone of the deck, and it's how the deck gets its name. Now, moving on, we've got a couple ways to get these pieces. Muddle the Mixer can transmute for either Beck and Call or Brain in a Jar. Muddle the Mixer can find Beck and Call the same way that Brain in a Jar can cast Beck and Call. Brainstorm and Ponder are just good digging cards. After that, we've got some other spells which are fun to cast off of the brain. Biggest among these is Day's Undoing. It gives it so much more utility because you'll be casting it at instant speed. If you can cast it at instant speed on your turn, it can act like a super counter, exiling all other spells that are still on the stack. This will help you counter spells that are otherwise uncounterable, like Abrupt Decay. Or you can use it on your opponent's end step or draw step to just completely mess up their hand or anything they were planning. It's especially great in response to an opposing show and tell. Cryptic Command is a similarly good blowout card that no one really expects coming, and the biggest blowout card of all in the deck is Supreme Verdict, which no one ever expects. We also run some other removal, such as Council's Judgment, Force of Will, and Swords to Plowshares. Council's Judgment is also super good at instant speed when cast off of the brain. It's just to get some good all-purpose answers to whatever may be coming your way. Now we've got a couple other miscellaneous cards here. We've got Sram's Expertise. Again, toying around with this. With the Expertise cycle, you can cast Beck and Call Fused the same way you can off of the Brain and Jar. And uh, we also run four Thing in the Ice. It's also tutorable by Muddle the Mixture, which makes it extra good. And we're casting a lot of instants and sorceries, seeing as we've got over 30 of them. So that means we're very likely to transform it into an Awoken Horror. When it transforms, this bounces all other non-horror creatures, which hits everything in the format that matters, except Phyrexian Revoker. This makes extra removal and beating face with a 7-8 is fantastic. Keep in mind that Thing in the Ice's transformation is a triggered ability on the cast, which means that it will resolve before the spell does. This means if your fourth spell is a beckon call, you will transform into a Woken Horror, bounce all non-horror creatures, and then get your four birds into play. The land base is pretty straightforward. We've got one forest so we can hard cast beckon call, a good smattering of islands and plains. We want more islands early, but we want to be able to fetch for all of our planes. We can run two wastelands to slow down opposing decks, and we've got three tundras just for safety in there because we do need some multicolored mana early on. Late in the game, it doesn't really matter what color mana we have because everything gets cast through Brain in a Jar. Now, when I've been playing, I've actually been able to get away with one tundra and two hollowed fountains. So if budgets are concerned, you can cut back, but I would highly recommend having at least one tundra. Now, going onto the sideboard, we've got an extra Sram's Expertise. I've been pulling it in on some grindier matchups. It seems to be doing okay. Disenchant for decks that have enchantments, Tormod's Crypt for decks with graveyards, Misdirection for decks with spells, Monastery Mentor for decks where going wide would be better, and Catch and Release, which is the spicy sideboard card that I'm trying out. Now, I've been using Catch and Release against decks that tend to have a very high variety of permanent types. 
The goal here is cast it fused the same way you would with a beckoned call. We then steal their best permanent and make them sacrifice a permanent of every type. We usually have bird tokens that we can sacrifice and some excess lands, so those aren't a big deal. The biggest thing for us is we frequently will have to sacrifice brain in a jar unless we're stealing an artifact. So opposing decks that run a diversity of permanent types are very much at risk to being catch and release blown out. Now, speaking of some matchups, let's talk about a few. Let's first talk about what I think the best matchup for the deck is, and that's Miracles. Miracles being super grindy, we can grind out even harder than they can. They spend most of their time waiting for an Entreat the Angels, and we spend most of our time waiting for a Beckoned Call. Guess which one gets cast sooner? Additionally, Miracles has particular problems dealing with decks that go wide, and Four Birds in the Air goes pretty wide and puts them on a pretty quick clock. On the flip side, we have Burn. Burn being such a fast deck, we really have to be careful about how we play. The biggest thing here is that if we can survive them emptying their hand to when they get to top decking territory, we will almost always win. For this reason, it's not very important to talk about what we board in, but more importantly, what we board out. You never, ever, ever want to cast Days Undoing against a burn deck. You'll just be giving them back a hand full of gas, and they will kill you very quickly. Additionally, keep in mind that you can sort the plowshares your own thing in the ice as it transforms to gain 7 life. This can be very useful against the burn deck to give you a little bit more breathing room to be able to get in and win. Also, thing in the ice is an MVP because it's just outside of bolt range. Agro Loam is a pretty tough matchup. They have very resilient threats that we don't have a lot of ways of dealing with directly. Our best way is to try and outvalue them as much as possible, but against Agro Loam, that's very difficult. The sideboarding is very important. Bringing in Monastery Mentors instead of Thing in the Ice helps us go wide, which is something that Agro Loam frequently has a problem with, unless they have Punishing Fire. But to deal with Punishing Fire, we've got Tormont's Crypt. Additionally, Catch and Release can let us pick off one of their permanents that we hate the most, and usually pick up a couple other in collateral damage. It's a really great card against Agro Loam. Now, Storm is a combo deck. You just want to make sure that you've got counter spells in place to counter a Burning Wish, Infernal Tutor, or Tendrils of Agony. Whichever one comes first, counter it first. If they're running past in flames, bring in Tormod's Crypt. Misdirection is also your friend here, because unless they go to Tendrils for 12, you can misdirect one back to them. Balance it out a bit. It's a nice surprise turnaround that could steal you a couple games. But much like against Burn, do not play Days Undoing against this deck. Lastly is what I think is the most fun matchup, and that's Food Chain. The Food Chain combo works by playing and exiling Mist Hollow Griffin over and over again, and the text on Beckon Call allows you to draw a card whenever any creature enters the battlefield. Especially against this deck, make sure to hold up a Beckon Call at instant speed on their turn if you think they're going to go off. This will really make them think about limiting how often they're casting their Mist Hollow Griffin or Eternal Scourge back from exile. By the time they've worked out enough mana to play Fierce Empath, you should have drawn enough cards to be able to find a counterspell for Fierce Empath. Or find some removal for Food Chain or something else along the lines to slow them down. Overall, really fun matchup, especially because Beck and Call against it is super fun. Just make sure you kill Leovold. Leovold is a pain in the butt. Do not let a Leovold live, if at all possible. Trade anything to kill Leovold. No joke. Well, that about wraps up this episode of Bring Worthy. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please consider leaving a like on the video. If you want to see more content like this, please feel free to subscribe. I have moved to a new channel now that's just dedicated to Fringeworthy. I promise we won't be moving again unless I get offered a professorship at the Calarian Community College. Fat chance at that. Anyways, please leave some comments down below if you've got any deck ideas or deck text you'd like to see in the future. I always love looking for some of those. I'm trying to find new decks going forward. So, thanks and I hope to see you next time.